Thank you, Jay. I'm honored to be here. It's great to be here. But before I tell the story of the migration of the people of the planet Dakota, the origin story of the Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota people, I'd first like to tell you and your listeners about the planet Dakota. Dakota is the second largest of four planets that revolve around their sun, the star Tegeta, one of the seven sister stars in the Pleiades, located in the open Taurus constellation. Dakota has two moons. They are Tunkawe and Tishkani. Tunkawe is the bigger of the two. There are also three other planets in this star system along with Dakota. They are Vela, Pyra, and Era. Era is the same planet of the Wicha LEP, Wi Koska, Wicha P Huian, the star woman, Simyasi, in the Pleiades, Switzerland, Billy Meyer contact story. The migration of the Dakota people to planet Earth is the origin story and genetic foundation of the Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota, and other Western people of Grandmother Turtle Island. However, unlike Era, Dakota does not have years of built up history of karma with Earth humans. The symbol for planet Dakota is that of a medicine wheel. The symbol shown on all Dakota ships, spacecraft, large and small, is the infinity symbol. Dakota has lush green forests, much like Earth's own Amazon. Dakota has nine continents. Each of them have evolved over time into nine different countries. These countries include Chatranhina, Valtra, Betra, Vulcana, Tahihua, Petrania, Alta Terra, Peiara, Verani. Chatranina is the largest country by population, second largest by size, and the seat of the governing High Council. Each of the other countries have their own council. In the central part of Chatran Ina is the mountain range that looks like the Andes. The coastal areas of the east and west have the appearance of the island of Fiji and the white sandy beaches of the Caribbean islands. The waters of these shores are much like Caribbean sea waters. Crystal clear, light blue, green water and beautiful. So back to the story of the mig migration of the Dakota people. Jay, this story was handed down to me about six to seven months ago by Ambassador Tanka Huene. Tanka Huene is of the Bear Clan, star ambassador of planet Dakota, spiritual leader of his people, a Wicha Lep Oyate, a Wichapi Oyate, and a Duen Kashina, a Duen Kashila, a Star Nation Elder, a Spirit Grandfather, Star Ambassador to the Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota people. He is well respected. So, Jay. Here is the migration story of the people of planet Dakota to the planet Earth and the origin story of the Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota people as handed down to me by Star Ambassador Danka Huene. Kodas, Suenkas, allies, brothers, this is Danka Huene, Star Ambassador of Planet Dakota, Andromeda Council Ambassador to the Dakota, Nakota, Lakota people, and all native people west of the Mississippi River. 
you would know me as a Wicha L E P Oyate. Wicha P Oyate. And a Duen Kash Ina. A Duen Kashila. A star nation elder. A spirit grandfather. I have passed down to Tolek my knowledge of the leaving of some of our Dakota people from our world in the Tegeta star system located in the Pleiades and our people's migration to Ina Machan Unchi Machan Mother Earth. At the time of the planned migration our planet Dakota had about two billion people. At that time we had spoken with the High Council of Dakota who had already approved the migration of our best volunteers who wished to go off planet to explore Mother Earth and assist people known as Lemurians. We put together our best healers, engineers, exobiologists, xenobiologists, linguistics, and cultural experts. These people were also the most emotionally and spiritually aware and most adept and mature of our people. They and some of our vegetable eating animals we selected were to fly, to be transported across space to the central spaceport of Lemuria on Earth. There were 200 Dakota men, women, and children joined together involved in this exodus aboard a large Dakota mothership bound for Lemuria. Once we received a transmission from the Lemurian civilization to receive us, we were invited to join the Lemurians to assist them how to live and work more in harmony with nature on this beautiful virgin planet, Earth. It was our role to help train the Lemurian people to be able to bring about greater meditative techniques to foster more harmonious feelings among them. They indicated a desire for this because there were certain Lemuria clans, some who chose to evolve at a slower pace more in harmony with all of nature and others who wanted to evolve faster along a more technological path. At that time our Dakota people also went to two other Earth-like worlds, one in the constellation Taurus as you would see it from your world in the star system Aldebaran. There are 14 planets there. One of them is called Tahini, a beautiful blue planet it's about 10% larger than your planet Earth. Approximately 5,000 of our people migrated to Tahini. These people today retain their normal Dakota size of about 7 feet tall on the world Tahini. The second Earth-like world can be found in the constellation Cassiopeia in the star system Shadar. It has 12 planets. The planet we settled there is called Huanihi. Huanihi is colored deep purple. Purple is the color of the water and various shades of pink. And it's about the size of Jupiter. Approximately 2,000 of our people migrated to Huanihi. These people today have evolved to be about 12 feet tall due to their large size of this planet. This whole migration happened to your planet Earth, to Dahini and Huanihi about 100,000 years ago. Back to the story of the migration of the Dakota people to Mother Earth, the arrival. When we arrived in Lemuria, the people of Lemuria were already telepathic so there was no difficulty in communicating with them. However, we set up an educational school to teach ways of being in harmony with nature, to teach Dakote dialects to these people in exchange for certain other Lemurian meditation methods and for us to learn which kind of earth plants had exactly what kind of healing properties. We gave to the Lemurians some of the peaceful vegetarian animals we brought to earth so that they too could enjoy 
walk and eat among the lush greenlands of Lemuria. We began to show the Lemurians our community layout of circular patterns and how to build earth-friendly structures. For our people, many families lived in this kind of communal setting with our own wise elders that were overseers of our communities. The Lemurians wanted to take more advancement at a much quicker pace, but our people wanted to take more time. Our people wanted to see that the Lemurians had first instilled within themselves a better sense of balance and harmony rather than the advancement of proposed technology. Truly for them to be more in tune with nature, to be one with all of life. Our people settled in their own communities for years before they even thought about exploration to other parts of Mother Earth. They needed time to infuse themselves with Earth's vibrational fields, and yet they still maintained their communication with our homeworld of Dakote. They kept the Dakote High Council informed of their progress. Over time, our Dakote mothership went back to our home planet after a 10-year period of overseeing the Dakota population on Earth as they settled into a routine of newly formed Earth life. Once this ship left, there was still communication with our planet, but over time the contact was reduced to a minimum so as to let our people become an established part of Earth life. As more children came to these families, our Dakota elders on Earth continued to pass down the stories of our people of where we came from in the Pleiades, from our son, Tegera, our homeworld, Dakote. A story of Earth changes. Both the Dakote and Lemurian peoples lived side by side for many years, and many children came. Mother Earth was bountiful, and life was good. However, when the Lemurian continent began to start having a shift in its land mass, earthquakes and volcanic eruptions caused a great loss of land. By that time, there were one, build, one billion Lemurians and Dakota people in total. 500 million people did not survive because this land mass went underwater. The other half of the remaining 500 million Many, almost all, decided to leave. And the Dakota people, alongside with the Lemurians, used scout crafts built to bring the survivors to the new land that arose from the ocean floor. Many on both worlds, Earth and Dakota, were saddened by the loss of so many people. But they knew that their souls were spiritually attuned to the fourth density their core origin essence of their lives and therefore they remained calm when their earth bodies entered a natural death cycle knowing that their spirit guides helpers teachers and key star people were with them and they remained calm during this time using an instant internal knowing a meditative state which caused their bodies not to feel anything no pain involved just instant transition. About the migration to Grandmother Turtle Island. Many of the Dakota and Lemurian people then migrated from Lemuria and began to settle on the new continents risen from the ocean floor. They settled off of the east coast of the land you today call China and the little islands that arose in these coastal areas. They also traveled to the west coast of Grandmother Turtle Island as well. This migration happened over some 50,000 years ago. During their experiences with the Lemurians, the Cote people did not intermarry with the people of Lemuria, but later chose to intermarry with the then indigenous people of Grandmother Turtle Island sometime after the Dakota people migrated to this new land. These indigenous people were more simple people, closer to the land, the plants, the trees, the animals, 
water, wind, and sky. They were close to nature, being in harmony with all of life on Mother Earth. This new life, it was washte. It was good. To the present, somewhere around 2,500 years ago, the Dakota people started to spread out across the land and began to gather into various clans and tribes. At around 1,500 years ago, these people began to be known as the Dakota, Lakota, Nakota people. And today, these same people are by blood and genetics the closest to us, your people, your forefathers, your ancestors on Dakota. This is the story of the migration of the Dakota people, the story of their lives as they came to Ina Makan, Unchi Makan, Mother Earth, and to Grandmother Turtle Island, as you call her. Know that this knowledge is for all the people, and very much so for the spiritual teachers, healers, and medicine men, as they continue their quest to this day to inform others that harmony with nature, balance, respect, love for all, and focus on spiritual life, this is the right path. This is the divine way to live. Hodakoda mikodas misuenkas. Peace, my allies, my brothers. Jay, this is the story that was told to me by Tanka Huene, star ambassador of the Dakota people to the Andromeda Council and to his people, the Dakota, Lakota, Nokota, and all of the people west of the Mississippi River. It is his hope and my hope that revealing the origin and heritage of the Dakota people has given you New Huacan Huachi Elipi Wosi Donaye Sacred Star Knowledge and New Makan Wichapi Wichohan New Spiritual Understandings of the Sacred Star Language and Heritage of our Wicha Elipi Huancaske Wichapi Huencas, our star ancestors, and that this has given you much true spiritual knowledge in a good way. Next, I'd like to share with you an addendum to this story, and it's something that I experienced this morning before having the interview with you. This Sunday morning, before waking, I saw in a dream a vision, a very large golden grass field that I knew to be in the Dakotas. I saw in this grass field four medicine wheels all together, all next to each other in a circle. Of these medicine wheels, three represented the Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota people. The fourth medicine wheel represented the symbol of the planet Dakota, the people of the planet Dakota. Your Wicha Elipi Huencas, Wichapi Huencas, your star ancestors. And I knew this because this vision was confirmed by Tanka Huene later that day. And I knew that there would be a great coming together, a meeting in the near future of all the people, the Dakota, Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota. This vision told me that a powwow will soon happen, sometime soon, for all of the people, Dakota, Dakota, Nakota, and Lakota. And the reason for this powwow is for a great healing among the people. 
a needed healing. This will happen in a good way. Star Ambassador Tanka Wene of Dakota and other star people will be at this Wicha EEP powwow, this Wicha P powwow, this star powwow to meet with the elders, the wisdom keepers, and all of the people. Ambassador Tanka will speak about our coming transformation on this planet in the near future, a complete transformation into the next world, the spiritual transformation of the fourth dimension, and a beautiful new future awaiting Ina Makan Unchi Makan, Mother Earth, and the people of Grandmother Turtle Island, and all of the people. Midakuye Oyasin Waudakoda Mikodas Misuenkas Wodakoda. Thank mm -hmm. you.